In your previous general chemistry courses, you probably learned that some ionic compounds are soluble in water, whereas others are insoluble in water. However, now that we've learned more tools, especially the idea of equilibrium, we could apply this idea of equilibrium to understand that there are really degrees of solubility when we talk about ionic compounds in water. For example, we can look at the compound calcium fluoride. If we take solid calcium fluoride and dissolve it in water, it will dissociate into the calcium 2 plus ions and two fluoride ions. If we write the equilibrium constant expression for this equilibrium system, we'll get that the K value is equal to the concentration of the calcium ions times the square of the concentration of the fluoride ions. However, in this case, we'll introduce a new subscript for this equilibrium constant. We'll use the subscript SP, and we'll call this new equilibrium constant the solubility product constant. The solubility product constant can be used as a way to determine the relative solubilities of different ionic compounds in water. Generally, for ionic compounds that have the same type of formula, the larger the KSP value, the more soluble the compound will be. The exceptions in this situation would be for ionic compounds that have different types of formulas. So for example, comparing calcium fluoride, which dissociates into three ions, would not lead to the exact same solubility estimate for something like sodium fluoride, which would dissociate into two ions. However, as long as the two ionic compounds we're comparing disassociate into the same number of ions, then the KSP will give us a way to estimate the relative solubility of the ionic compounds. In general, if a compound has a KSP value that is less than 10 to the minus 5, we'll say that the compound is insoluble. If the KSP value is between 10 to the minus 2 and 10 to the minus 5, we'll say that that compound is slightly soluble. And if the KSP value has a value of greater than 10 to the minus 2, we'll say that that compound is soluble in water. When we talk about solubility, we can define it as the amount of a compound that dissolves to form a saturated solution. And the units we'll use will either be grams per liter, but more generally, we'll use molarity as the units for solubility. We can find the solubility for ionic compounds by using our KSP values and ice tables that we've learned about in previous lessons. In this problem, we'll want to calculate the molar solubility of lead chloride in water, and we're given the fact that the solubility product constant for lead chloride has a value of 1.17 times 10 to the negative fifth. We'll begin this problem by writing the solubility equation and the KSP expression for lead chloride dissolving in water. After we do this, we'll draw the ice table for the lead chloride dissolving in water. We'll determine how much the change values will be for the lead and the chloride ion, and since we're given the value of KSP, we can use X for the change values. For the chloride ion, remember that it will change by 2x since there are two moles of chloride ion for every one mole of lead ion. The equilibrium values in the ice table will be x for the equilibrium concentration of the lead ion and 2x for the equilibrium concentration of the chloride ion. We'll now apply these equilibrium values to our KSP expression. So we'll get 1.17 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to x times the square of 2x. When we take the square of 2x, we get 4x squared, and if we multiply that by x, we find that the KSP value of 1.17 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to 4x cubed. We can solve for x taking the cube root of 1.17 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 4, and we'll find that the value of x, or the concentration of the lead ion at equilibrium, is 1.43 times 10 to the negative second molar. Since the lead ion 
is in a one-to-one -one ratio with the lead chloride, this value is also the molar solubility of the lead chloride that's dissolved in the water. So far, we've talked about solubility in pure water. However, in many situations, we'll have an ionic compound that's going to dissolve in a solution that already has another solute. And sometimes, that other solute will have an ion that is in common with one of the ions that we're trying to dissolve. So we could ask the question, what's going to happen to the solubility of this compound if we're trying to dissolve it in a solution where a common ion is present. In other words, we'll have to go back and think about how the common ion effect will play a role in the solubility of these compounds. We recall that the common ion effect says if we have a strong electrolyte present in solution and it has an ion in common with another compound we're trying to dissolve, then that compound that we're trying to dissolve will be less soluble than it would be if it were trying to dissolve in water without the common ion present. Let's see how we could incorporate this idea of the common ion effect into a solubility problem where we have to do a calculation. Now in this situation, we're given the information that the molar solubility of calcium fluoride in pure water is 3.32 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. However, we're asked to calculate the molar solubility of calcium fluoride in a 0.1 molar solution of sodium fluoride. And we're also given the solubility product constant for calcium fluoride with a value of 1.46 times 10 to the negative tenth. Now, as with our previous solubility problem, we want to begin by writing the solubility equation and the KSP expression. After we do this, we can write the ice table. However, when we start filling in the initial values for the calcium and the fluoride, we recall that we have some sodium fluoride present in solution initially. Since we know sodium fluoride is a strong electrolyte, that means that our initial concentration of fluoride ion is going to be 0 0.100 molar. This will be different from our other situation where we were looking at the solubility of a compound in pure water. Once we've filled in the initial values, we can look at the change values. Since we're given the value of k, that tells us that we can use x in the change row. For the calcium ion concentration, it'll increase by the value of x, and the fluoride ion will increase by the amount 2x. For the equilibrium concentration, we'll have a value of x for the concentration of the calcium ion and 0 0.100 plus 2x for the concentration of the fluoride ion. However, we notice that since the value of k is very small, we could assume that 2 times x is going to be very small compared to 0 0.100. So we'll assume the equilibrium concentration of the fluoride ion is just 0 0.100. Now we can put these equilibrium values into our KSP expression and solve for x. So we get 1.46 times 10 to the negative tenth equals x times 0 0.100 squared. When we solve for x, we find that it has a value of 1.46 times 10 to the negative eighth. Now we can check our assumption that we made and we'll do this by taking the value of x, 1.46 times 10 to the negative eighth, divided by the 0 0.100 and multiply that by 100. And we find that we get a value of 1.46 times 10 to the negative fifth percent, so that's well below 5%, so that assumption was valid. Now we know the value of x is the concentration of the calcium, and that's also the concentration of the calcium fluoride that dissolved and that has a value of 1.46 times 10 to the negative eighth. We see that this is a much smaller concentration than the calcium fluoride dissolved in pure water, and it's smaller by about four orders of magnitude, or four decimal places. So that confirms what we know about the common ion effect, that a compound will be less soluble in a solution that has a common ion 
than it would be in just pure water. In this video, you've learned how to write the KSP, or the solubility product constant expression, for an ionic compound dissolving in water. You've also learned how to use KSP values to compare the solubility of different compounds. Then, we learned how to use the KSP value to determine the molar solubility of a compound in water. And finally, we learned how to figure the molar solubility of a compound dissolved in a solution that has a common ion. In other words, we learned how to use a common ion effect in a solubility product problem. The one thing we have not done yet, but you'll see an example of in class, is you should learn how to use a molar solubility to calculate the KSP value for a, an ionic compound.